In today's episode of Making the Solo, we're going to attempt to answer the question, uh, how do we make the solo when chords are weird? Hello, my name is David. If you're new to the channel, this channel is all about helping you unlock your musicality on the instrument so that you could tell a better musical story. If you'd like to download a free course that has to do with this, well, I have something prepared for you. It's called the Music Theory DNA. It's a very simple way to understand music theory and the link is below, sign up. It's completely free and that'll help you go a little bit further. But for now, we're gonna talk about this, uh, this difficult topic that has to do with playing over chords that don't seem to fit a scale. And that happens every once in a while, and whenever that happens, that can be very difficult and confusing, and we're gonna deal with that today. The backing track you're hearing right now was really born out of randomness. It was not planned at all. I just hit record on my video and the, the computer, and, and you saw that in the intro. I just placed my fingers on the keyboard, and these chords came out. Not planned at all. There's a lot of surprises in these chords. They don't all match the same scale as you can hear here. And that's what we're dealing with. Now, the first thing we need to understand is that a musical element, whether it's a chord, a lick, a scale, will have a meaning that will trigger emotions in the listener because of the intervals that make that musical element. An interval is the distance between two notes. And what's important here is that one of these notes is going to act as the magnet. It's going to attract the other note that is played. And that magnet typically is the lowest note that we have in a chord. I say typically, but really, if we think about it, each note of musical element can be perceived as a magnet. So it's that attraction that really makes a musical thing speak. And that's what carries the emotion in that musical thing. If I play a note on the guitar, this one for example, random note, this note doesn't really mean anything. It might be a pleasant sound if you like electric guitar with delay and reverb, but that's it. Now if I play that note on top of one of these chords, that note will trigger an emotion. It might be a pleasant emotion. It might be a non-pleasant emotion. Maybe it'll give you a feeling of being tensed. All those things are going to happen because that note now exists according to the chord we're playing over. That chord is gonna attract that note. That creates an interval, and that's what will trigger the emotion. Let's try that pitch over this uh, first chord. We'll see what happens. It might, uh, let's see. What do you think? I think it's a pleasant emotion. I think it matches well. It's not really tensed. It matches because that chord, and again, that's, that is completely random, that, uh, that chord includes that particular pitch. I got lucky. Now, if I change that pitch to maybe one fret higher, We'll see what happens. A different emotion will, will happen, that's for sure. Let's try it. Oh, that's a little tensed. It's a valid emotion, but it's a little tensed. So that's the first thing we need to understand. And this really happens subconsciously. We don't really think about it necessarily when we're playing, but it's important to realize that these notes will trigger different emotions. So what we're trying to do in this particular case is to be as pleasant as possible because these chords do not fit one scale. They were completely random and no matter how you try, you're not gonna be able to find one set of seven notes that are going to be matching these different chords. So we need to take a different route. Here's the route I suggest taking. I always suggest that, guitar down, and it's because music is, is something that is born from inside. If we lock ourselves to the instrument, we're gonna start uh, thinking about uh, scales and, and theory and licks, and we're not doing that here. We're just gonna take a note. We're gonna listen to the first chord and try to extract from that chord all the different notes that are found in that chord. One that comes to mind, or that, that stands out to me, is the Okay. 
And the reason we're putting the guitar down is that we don't want to think like a guitar player. That's going to lock us into scales, and we know that in this case, it's not going to work. Plus, I want you to really connect with the inside musician, your inner ear, who you are as a musician. Then we'll take the instrument, which is a tool, an instrument. And no music is born from that. We'll use it as a tool. But we're going to start with a note. We're going to listen to that first chord and see if uh, a pitch stands out from that chord. I'm hearing that note is, is part of the chord. You can hear it. It's the high note. That's what stands out to me. Now here's one secret that we often do without really thinking about it, but if we can keep the same exact pitch throughout different chords, that pitch, even though it's the same exact pitch, will have different meanings. Why? Because if this is the bum, and on the bottom you have something that is attracting that, well, that note becomes bum, one emotion. Now, if that magnet changes bum, to something else, well, that note, even though it's the same pitch, the meaning of that note will change. And it's a very pleasant thing for the listener. Whether you, you are aware of it or not, now you are. When you're listening to your favorite songs, you, you will recognize that probably, that a same musical line with different chords on the back sounds super satisfying because that musical line will have different meanings and you will experience these different meanings as the chords are changing. So let's try that. We have this one pitch. Let's see if we can keep that pitch on the second chord. We'll see what happens. Different meaning there. Let's try it again. It kind of works a little tense. That doesn't work. On that fourth chord, that's really tensed. I don't like that. So we could keep that pitch on the first three chords. Let's grab our guitar. Rest assured that our solo is not going to be made of a single note all the time. We're just uh, trying to figure out really the target notes in this case. So we had bum. Let's try to find that on our guitar. Bum. Let's try that. We know it works. We know it works on that second chord. Beautiful. Third one, a little tense, but that's okay. We know that this fourth one, that clashes, right? So here's another secret. When you're building a melodic line, you want to build that melodic line in a very narrow area of the fretboard or the keyboard or whatever you're playing. You don't want to jump around too much because you want the listener to internally sing that theme you, that's how the listener will remember it. The listener won't remember ba, 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 ba. That's too hard. Something very, very narrow will be super pleasant melodically for the listener. So the pitch we had was on the second string, 14th fret. We know that that pitch worked on the first three chords, not on that fourth one. It's just too tensed. So we're gonna try to find a, a pitch, a note, that is very close to that second string 14th fret. So maybe we'll try one fret higher, see what happens. So second string 15th fret, let's see that. That's a little weird. So let's try maybe one fret lower, maybe second string 13th fret. Yeah, that works well, I think. So far, we only have two pitches and we covered four chords. On the first three chords, we have that pitch, second string 14th fret. And then on that fourth chord, we're going to go one fret lower. And all that was born from listening, from singing. And then we grabbed our guitar. Okay, so now we are on that second string, 13th fret. Let's pick it up from the fourth chord. We'll play that note and then we'll continue on that 13th fret and see what happens. Here's that fourth chord. I'm on the 13th fret. Let's play that note again. Uh, it doesn't work. Let's go back to 14. Oh, that works great. 14 again, yes. 14 again. Yeah, oh, I like that. 14 again. Yeah. And then we just start over. So far, we only have two pitches. The only thing we need to remember is that on that fourth chord, we need to go to the 13th fret. Now, that theme, although the, the notes, the target notes work really well, I'm not going to play this the whole thing. That's going to be very, uh, pretty boring, right? 
We're gonna embellish that. We're gonna embellish that with melodic ideas, adding some rhythm to it and just see what happens. Here's where we're going to re-engage our guitar player's mind. So far, we were very much composing with our inner ear, singing the notes. Then we grabbed our guitar to try those out, but we were still very much composing with our inner musician, trying to find these target notes. Now we're gonna add some embellishments, maybe some bends, some vibratos, add a few notes. And remember that these notes need to be very uh, close, very narrow to each other. You don't wanna jump around too much. You really want the listener to be able to sing that theme and almost participate to the musical experience that's going on. Even though they're not playing, their mind is being engaged. That's, that's really the secret to, to captivating the audience and, and make them crave what you're going to play. I'll just test things out. I'm gonna start here with the 14th fret. I wanna go down. Yeah, that'll work. 13th fret. Back to 14. Oh, I love that one. It repeats. As I do this, I'm gonna have more ideas. And if I mess up, I'll just know it. I'll take a mental note. No. Yes. Yeah, no. Really, it's, it's about exploration at this point, but at least you have those target notes. If you do this, maybe, you know, five minutes. Eventually, you're gonna have some references that you can really rely on. Your ear is going to tell your brain, ooh, that is very nice. And you don't even need to consciously remember these. Your, your ear is telling your fingers, go here on this particular chord. It, it will happen, trust the process. And then there's the secret sauce when you are composing. Once you have a very simple theme, if you want to make it work even more, you're going to replicate that theme on your, your keyboard or with a different instrument because two things playing the same exact thing at the same time establish that thing, establishes that thing as a solid truth, as, as something that is not a mistake. And that's, that's really gonna be the glue that makes everything work. So this is a studio trick and it, it really always works. But first, you really need to find these target notes, especially when the chords are weird, and, and then embellish and replicate that with a different instrument. You can download the backing track for free so that you can try this concept on your own. The link is below, it's completely free. And also, you should check out episode one of uh, Making the Solo. In that episode, we talk about how to create melodic ideas when chords are not weird. Check it out right here, I'll meet you there. Thanks for watching this video, practice well.